Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Troy, and in today's video, I'm gonna be setting up a brand new aquarium. That aquarium's not gonna be out here with the two display tanks. It's actually going to my brand new fish room. So the aquarium we're setting up today is this 40 gallon breeder here in my fish room. We're gonna be setting up the entire aquarium, scaping it, filling with water, and then unboxing some new fish later in the video. I'm really excited to get this tank up and running, so let's dive right in. Okay, so here we are in my brand new fish room. In a recent video, we set this full room up, making it much more functional and aesthetically pleasing. And we also built this double rack for the 40 gallon breeder. In that recent video, we built the stand, painted it, and then we got it into place down here in my basement. It currently has my African shell dweller tank on top, but then it has the empty 40 gallon breeder on the bottom that we're setting up today. I'm really excited to set up this 40 gallon breeder. I had some awesome comments on the last video, but I actually went with something pretty rare and different when it comes to South American cichlids. So I started off by just doing a water and leak test for the new stand and the new tank. And while I was doing this, I also was soaking my driftwood. At that point, I used the Ciche Ultra Zero pump that I use for all my water changes, which is an awesome tool because you can drain your tank all the way down to the very bottom. And once I had all the water out of the tank, it was time to set it up and start with the aquascape. Yeah, baby. <laughs> so I started off by adding the substrate with white sand. This is moonlight sand from Caribbean. See, I'll leave all the links to the products I use in this build down in the description in case you need it. This was really fine sand, which I wanted based on the fish that I would be getting for this tank, so that's just a hint of what's to come. And then I started planting out my driftwood and rocks. I got my driftwood from a local fish store, and I took some of the rocks from my backyard and my koi pond. And when I started placing the driftwood in the tank, I wanted to provide some overhangs for the fish to swim in and out of, but I also kind of wanted it to look like tree roots coming down into the sand at different directions. I like some of the different colors on this driftwood, and I used one of the smaller pieces of driftwood to prop up this bigger piece to give more of the arching branches downward into the tank. This driftwood's definitely gonna leach a lot of tannins, at least initially, but that's not harmful to the fish, and I'll just do water changes to start removing that over time. But once I liked the placement of the driftwood, it was time to start putting in the rocks, which were all smooth rocks to mimic the natural habitat of this fish that I picked up. Once the rocks were in place, I picked up some live plants. I propagated a few out of my other tanks, and I'm gonna pick up some java fern and anubias later in the video, and I glued it to the driftwood. Overall, I think this came out looking pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty damn good, lads! Yeah! So once I was happy with the aquascape, it was time to fill up the tank with water. Okay, so as the tank was filling, I had my buddy here helping me, and the tank was nearing the top, and it was time to install the filters. I went with two new Tidal 35s temporarily. I might upgrade to a 55 or 75 later on, but I love these hang on the back filters. And I also went with a Ciche Voyager Nano, which will provide some gentle flow throughout the tank and kind of give it that streaming river feel that I'm going for. I also used some seeded media from my other tanks to jumpstart this cycle, so this tank was ready to go. Okay, so I just got my delivery today from Tangled Up in Cichlids. This is my first time ordering from this source, although I know it's a highly respected spot, and surprisingly I haven't ordered from there before, but they did have what I wanted, which were some relatively rare cichlids. I can't wait to see them, so let's check it out. Okay, some good packaging here. It was really cold today outside whenever this package delivered. However, inside it still feels warm, which is a good sign. And here we go. 
it's interesting that the newspaper is also inside the first bag. So let's get it outside the first bag. Okay, here we go. And no. <laughs> it is really packed well. See, based on the label, what I got here, if you can read that. But I'm going to talk through these a little bit more once we get it out of the bag. Okay, I finally got this unpackaged. It was really well packaged, which is actually a, a good thing. Okay, here we go. So these guys are tiny, but I think we can get a good look here. These are Gymno Geophagus Terra Purpura. <laughs> They're funny little guys. But these guys are definitely small right now, so we're going to get them acclimated and then into the tank, and then I'll get a better shot of all of them towards the end of the video. So after having these guys float and temperature acclimate, it's time to get them into the tank. And anytime I order online, I just do the plop and drop method into a bucket, into the net, and get them into the tank with the light off. Okay, so the fish that I picked up here are the Gymnogeophagus terra purpura, and I would say that they're relatively rare. They're definitely rare in my area, and they have a lot of awesome traits and behavior to them. One of the coolest things about this fish is that they are actually cold water tolerant, meaning you don't need a heater in your aquarium. That's good. One less thing. I actually do have a heater in this tank temporarily as the seller had them around 75 degrees. So I'm just slowly walking this down until I can remove that heater, which will be in the next few weeks. The reason these Gymno Geophagus can be without a heater and they are cold water tolerant is that they're from a different area of South America than a lot of your traditional cichlids. They are from the Uruguay area, which has very cold winter seasons and they have much more fluctuations to their temperatures in their natural environment. I actually had one of the more popular Gymnogeophagus species, the Balzani, for a few years, and it did pass after a few years, and I think that was due to the constant warmer temperatures that it just isn't really used to. So one of the things I'm really looking forward to about these new fish is testing that cold water temp and maybe even using some colder simulations and warmer simulations throughout the year to not only induce breeding, but also to see their behavior and their color at those different temperatures. Since these fish are so young and they don't have their color yet, I'm actually gonna run some footage from the Cichlid Dojo. Make sure to check out his channel. I'll leave a link down in the description below. I highly recommend you go over to his channel and subscribe. He has a lot of awesome cichlids in his fish room. He was nice enough to let me use some of his video footage of his Gymnogeophagus that he had in an outdoor pond and his have awesome color, and I can't wait for mine to get to this level, which should be hopefully in the next year. The Gymnogeophagus terra purpura will actually get slightly bigger than this, and I can't wait for my group to be full grown and show that awesome color, which has some of that blue-green in their body, which almost resembles a green terror, along with some of the red in their fins that really makes them stand out. Gymnogeophagus are actually a subgroup to the Geophagus species, I have a few different types of geophagus currently. I have the redhead top hose in my 180. I have the geophagus vini here in my 75 gallon tank. But the gymno geophagus have a couple distinct traits about them that differ from the normal geophagus species. First off, gymno can be translated to naked. <laughs> Geo is translated into eat and phagus is translated into eater. So your traditional geophagus is just an earth eater, but the gymno geophagus is a naked earth eater. They get this name because they have a naked cheek and they don't have scales like the traditional geophagus. It's a very small distinction along with a couple other things that classifies them as a gymno geophagus rather than just the normal geophagus. As I mentioned earlier, one thing about their natural environment is that they are in clear water streams and river tributaries. So that's kind of what I went for for this tank setup. I set up the driftwood to kind of look like roots going down into the sand and then some smooth rocks that you would typically find in their environment. Because their max length is maybe around five to six inches tops, they will be great in a 40 breeder long term. However, once a pair or two forms in this tank, I did plan to take out a few and either set up a different tank, put them out in my outdoor pond, 
or find a friend that would like to take the few extras. But the goal here is not only to see this species grow, but also just to learn about them as it's the first time I've kept them and that colder water temperature is something that I haven't done before and it's gonna be really cool to see how the fish interact in those environments. So as time goes on, we're definitely gonna give updates on this tank, whether that's growth rate videos, care guides, any breeding activity that happens in this tank, and overall just showing that awesome color that those adults tend to get. But I'm really excited to have this tank set up here in my fish room. I think it really completes everything. The next big update is going to be the 75 gallon aquarium getting a huge upgrade. I've been talking about this quite a bit, but it's going to be a custom aquarium, and it's gonna be an awesome setup that I can't wait to show on the channel. So with all that being said, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of those future updates. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next week.